I nerd sniped myself, um, which just means that I thought of a cool project I wanted to work on and it captured me and now I'm working on it. So in my video about the main menus for Portal 64, I mentioned how the N64 mouse was kind of expensive and I want to have an N64 mouse to use on my game. So I decided to spend even more money and try to make one myself. And to do this, I decided to get some Arduino components. I have a module that lets me read USB devices, attach that to the Arduino, and then I have to figure out how to get the Arduino to talk to the Nintendo 64, which fortunately there are plenty of examples of that online. The plan is to first get the Arduino talking to the Nintendo 64. Once I get that figured out, I can use it to emulate the mouse. Then after that, I figure out how to get the Arduino to talk to the USB device. And there we go. Just take the data from the USB mouse and send it over to N64. And so I could plug in any mouse, including a modern optical or laser mouse, which is much better than the, the ball mouse that N64 has. Yeah, that's the plan. We'll see how this goes. To start, I got the Arduino to communicate with the N64 acting as a controller and made some progress right away. I've hit a milestone. I got the Arduino talking to the Nintendo 64. So I've wired it through that gray port and I have this, I have this test ROM that shows the status of every controller. So I have that green one plugged into port one and then port two I have my Arduino controller and you can see it's detecting it and then not working. So like, I'm close. Um, so, and over here, it's printing out the last command the last command received from the Nintendo 64. Command zero is initialize the controller. Command one is give me controller data. And so it's receiving those commands, but I just, I guess I'm not sending back the data properly. So I do need to debug that. I ordered an oscilloscope to do that because I was not able to figure it out with just trial and error, and I figured just actually seeing what the signal is is, is gonna make this so much easier to debug. Because I was stuck waiting for an oscilloscope, I moved my attention to USB. So, I have another big update. I have the first little bits of USB working, kind of. <laughs> so, this is the chip I'm using. It's It has, it has this nice uh, module board on it that I can easily connect to my Arduino and I am able to now talk to it. So over here in the command line, as I plug, or not the command line, that's, that's the serial monitor. So any data I can send from the Arduino to the PC. And when I plug a USB device in, you can see it detected it. Get status 15 from the chip I'm using, that, that number means something was connected. So yeah, so I'm able to detect the connection and when I disconnect the device, it sends the status 16, an interrupt status. So it says, hey, I was disconnected. So I'm able to talk to the chip, which was the big milestone. And the first thing to implement is detecting a device being connected and disconnected. Uh, it was a bit of a hassle to get just the basic connection working. USB is kind of complicated, I'm finding. That might make this project um, die <laughs> if I can't figure it out. It's it's a little tricky. So, yep, that's all. Spoiler, USB did not kill the project. So, I've uh, had a pretty big breakthrough. I now can talk to the mouse via the USB port on the Arduino. So that's half the project done. Now I just need to get the other half talking the M64 done and then connect the two parts together. And I just wanted to show you it operating. So you can see when I push the reset button here on the Arduino, the serial monitor outputs that we have a mouse connected. It, it detects it at device descriptor one, interface one, and that's endpoint two with that eight indicating that it's an input. And then as I move the mouse around, you can see I'm getting mouse data. So the first two zeros, that represents the buttons. So if I push buttons, you can see it's sending me information about the buttons. And then the, uh, the X and Y movements are the next two bytes. So as I move, move it from side to side, you can see that one in the middle changes a lot, and I move it up and down. So yeah, 
I have the mouse input reading. Excited to have that half done. I'll update you when I get something else. Something else happened. I got my oscilloscope. And so now I should be able to debug what's wrong with my board. But for, to start, I'm going to just look at what the signal looks like for a real N64 controller and then compare that to mine. I have the N64 controller hooked up to the oscilloscope and you can see here this is the signal that is measuring the communication between the console and the controller. So I'm going to pause the oscilloscope on one of these. Let's take a close look here. So every one of these up and down bits here, so you can see there a signal goes down and back up, that's either a one or a zero, or it's a bit. And so first there's eight bits that the console sends to the controller. And so you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then that last bit here is actually what's called a stop bit. It's not data, it's just, well, it's just there. And the way the N64 controls if it's a one or a zero is controlled by how long it stays down. So you have the, the drops down at first, and if it stays low for three mil, um, microseconds, then that's a zero. Whereas later in the signal here, so right here, you can see it drops down and only one microsecond later it goes up and it holds high for three. So that's a one if it only holds down for one microsecond, it's a zero if it holds down for three. So essentially you can think of it as it drops the signal down and then two microseconds later, the controller or console should sample the line to determine if it's a one or a zero. This is kind of the best way to think of it. So let's go back and like decode what this is. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros, and then the stop bit. So eight zeros for Joybus protocol is asking the controller to describe itself. So that can be used to tell if it has a memory card inserted or if it's um, N64 mouse, if it has the rumble pack, all of these things are returned from this command. Let's uh, capture, there we go. So I've captured a new frame. This frame is actually a command to get the controller data. And so this one, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros followed by a one. So that command is to actually retrieve the controller data. One thing to note is the first eight bits, the direction is the console talking to the controller. And then after, after those eight bits, it's actually the console switches over to, to listening and it's the controller that and starts sending the data back. And it does that using a shared data line where there's a weak pull-up resistor in the console that holds the voltage high and either the console or the controller can pull it low. But neither of them try to pull the line high at the same time. So that way, if they're trying to talk at the same same time, the worst thing they can do is both be pulling a data line low at the same time, but that won't lead to a short. Whereas if you had one trying to pull it high and the other one trying to pull it low, you could damage some circuitry with that. But this way, with a shared data line just only pulling low, you can have both the console and the controller use the same wire to both talk and listen. And now that we've taken a look at what the signal looks like from a real N64 controller, now we can compare it to what mine's doing. Okay, so now I have the oscilloscope connected to my controller here. So we can look at the signal and see if we can spot anything wrong with it. So first, let me see if I can just capture. Looking, I've already looked at this, sorry. I'm going to ruin the fun of real live debugging and just show you what I found. So. The stop bit here is too, sh too short. That means I'm not waiting long enough before responding to the console. And I don't know how much of a difference that makes if the, if the console actually needs that long stop bit, but I figured be safe and just try to match as much as I can to the original console. So I'll fix that. So after fixing that and re-uploading, you can now see it's a, it's a wider stop bit now, right there. So that's been resolved. And then the next thing I noticed, this should be a get controller data packet, 
or command, and then the response is supposed to be four bytes, but I actually noticed I'm short, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then a stop bit. So I am not sending back enough data, and it was just an off by one error where I was exiting a loop one iteration too soon. So now, after fixing that, you can see it has the, the full, full data being returned. There's another byte there. And at this point, the controller actually works for the most part. You can see it works for the most part, but then it has occasional flicker. And that's just, there's on occasion, the N64, or my controller, is not responding in time. So I don't know if you'll spot one here, but occasionally you only get a, uh, yeah, you see that very, very, very briefly, it gets down to like only a single byte. That's the console asking the, the microcontroller for a response and it just doesn't respond. And I suspected that this had to do with interrupts. Uh, the, the microcontroller responds to what's called an interrupt. The moment that line goes down, that to signal the console wants information, it interrupts the CPU and immediately jumps to the code to respond. Well, that only works if the CPU isn't already into another interrupt. And the Arduino I'm using has an interrupt on by default for the timer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off. After that, works seemingly every time. This is the last problem I've encountered, and I think I have a working controller, and now I just need to integrate the USB half together, so I get the input from the USB port and send that along to the N64. And as a side note, you may be wondering why the XY position for the controller is getting, like jumping all over the place and being sporadic. Well, that's just for debugging purposes. I just had it do that just so I can know if I'm getting data back. And uh, well, I am. It's just crazy sporadic data all over the place. And now with those problems out of the way, the Arduino can talk to the N64 like it's a controller. Now that I can talk to the N64 with the Arduino, I now just need to take the USB data coming from the mouse and send that to the N64. All right, so I 3D printed a case for my components here and I also printed out a, or soldered together a nice circuit board so these things can fit neatly into here rather than being a tangle of wires. Um, but I haven't tested it after doing that change. So here we go, I'm gonna first test it. So first I need to power it on. It uses its own power source instead of relying on the N64. There we go, power LED and no smoke. That's a good first step. There we go, controller detected. Last thing I need to do is just plug in the USB mouse here. And turn that on. I said turn that on, okay. I have a problem. Let's just double check. That if I fire this up, okay, let's turn the controller off and on maybe. Okay, I have something to debug now, so, yay. It's working now, but the thing is, I didn't change anything. I just connected it to the Arduino IDE here and then re-uploaded the program and now it just works. So, I don't know if I had some other program on the Arduino that I don't know, but either way, it works now. So that's a relief. Also, I'm reprinting the top case. It had some defects that I wanted to fix. So that's all. There you have it. A USB port for the Nintendo 64. So I've tested on a few games. So it works great with Portal 64 as intended. And, uh, I also tested this with the Mario Paint Studio. 
Um, is the mouse is not sensitive enough, it seems. I have to really move the mouse a lot to get it to do anything I want. Um, I also tried it on a couple of games like StarCraft. You know, playing of StarCraft with a mouse makes a lot more sense using a controller. And, well, the, the cursor part works, but I can't do anything other than command units around. I can't build, which is kind of important for that game. So if I do add the ability to use a mouse and keyboard with this as a controller, I'd be able to solve that problem and play StarCraft with the mouse and keyboard on the Nintendo 64. So what's next? Well, I for now I'm going to put this project down. I might pick it up again later, add some more features like mouse and keyboard support or the ability to plug in any USB controller or possibly a Bluetooth adapter as well. Um, I'm not super motivated to do that because there's already a product, Blue Retro, that lets you connect Bluetooth controllers to Nintendo 64. So I'm not hugely motivated in creating a competing product there. And for anybody who was worried, that controller I took apart to test with the oscilloscope, it's back together. I tested it and works. So no hardware harmed. We're good there. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything for this project. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And um, I'll see you next time.